exciting episode of Tazama. 15 years ago, August 7th, is a day many Kenyans will love to forget for a long, long time. The Cooperative Bank House is the only building around this area that was left standing after Kenya suffered one of the deadliest terror attacks. Today, the building stands completely restored, majestic around this area that people have now commonly referred to as Bomb Blast. Check out our first story as we pay a visit to the Memorial Park. Job swap this week, we decided to swap Marian Joki, who works as a Tisha. with Cyrus Gitao, who works as a crocodile hunter. I like my job because I like grooming ladies to look nice and to beautiful. Okay, my job is quite challenging because you can get a client who is like stressed the whole day. So if she comes here, you, you are like, as in you make you, you try to make her hair well, but she's like she's not comfortable with it. I love being with the animals and taking care of them. So, um, whom do you think we are going to swap you with today? I have no idea. A mechanic? We are going to swap you yeah. with uh -huh. a beautician, a crocodile handler. What? I have never thought of that. <laughs> yeah, I don't like animals. I don't like those, those, those kind of yeah, place where yeah, people are always talking, talking, talking. <laughs> We took Cyrus to Iro's salon to meet Mirian. I'm looking for Mirian. One thing you need to, to do is to, to look at someone's skin, then you can know which makeup or which type of makeup you can use on her. Because we have light skin complexion, we have dark co complexion, so you have to have like a variety of them. That's not true. Especially here, some, everyone is busy, so you don't have time to backbite. And it was now time for Cyrus to learn how to apply makeup. You see, for her, she has a dry skin, so what you use, you use a cream foundation. You don't have to do it the liquid one. Yeah. Now you start applying. Marian took to Mamba village to learn Cyrus' job. Hi Marian. Hi. This is where we have the crocodiles. Mm -hmm. We have uh, the Nile crocodile. Let's see how she's going to handle or this. Maybe you come in and help me to handle it from here. Hey, look at Yeah. <laughs> I think crocodiles are beautiful. Look at the skin. It depends whether you are right handed or left handed. Hey. And we have big ones on this side. Hey, do you know what? No problem. Chuka, chuka. Let me see. That don't do this. Don't do this. Don't do this. Chuka, 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 chuka. Chuka. Stop it, Andrew. The reason why they are not together, they are cannibals. When I say they are cannibals, it means the big ones can eat the small ones. So you touch this side and it you move towards this side. You see? So if you touch it. What? What? Hey, I'm going to reduce your container. Start the feed. It's feeding time and Marianne goes to change into the right gear. Back to the salon, Cyrus gets a client while Marianne helps to get food for the crocodiles. If I get the meat, after that we bring the meat to this place and we have to go in. Good, good, good. He is one of the most dangerous crocodiles that we have. I need to have some. Is this okay? The part I am so glad. It's down to the task for Cyrus, and he can't seem to differentiate the different kinds of makeup, and has to keep on confirming from Marian. So take care, Ita Kuma. Come. Uh, yeah. 
goes to Kiru the Numa, there are chances that that will come. I was just scared because of those, those big crocodiles. Huh? There is another one called Big Daddy, and I was like, wow. Atarudi, Atarudi. Don't run. At one point, I felt scared because of her. There's a priest there with the big crocodile. You're not supposed to turn back. There are chances if you start uh, turning back, you might fall back to the water. It's okay. Okay, I will apply. Yeah. These are the name, the color names. You can, you can you can draw it mm -hmm. through through at the center. It seems Marian is getting comfortable with the reptiles. So what, what happens when you're here? Somehow you try to protect yourself in the buckets. Mm -hmm. Hi, hi, my friend. What's the name of this car? Brown. 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 Mirian is done. It was good. Now I'm at least, I'm not nervous. Yeah, I think I can be doing this every Sunday. While Cyrus. It's difficult. But yes. <laughs> He was using the wrong brushes. Sticky. <laughs> he also used a shadow for the face, but it's not meant for the face. Yeah. When I saw her, I, I had doubts whether she would make it. Why? Just by look. You know, you can tell by look whether someone <laughs> can do certain jobs. Yeah, I think I can do this, yeah? Somehow confused because I, I I could only remember the, the 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 first two steps, and then the, from the third step I could not remember anything. I respect their job. Yeah. The August 7th Memorial Park is located where the U.S. Embassy once stood until the terror attack of August 7th, 1998. Let's find out more about this park. So what basically happens around the park other than people coming to rest? We bring kids to the park from different schools, both public and private, so that we can educate them on the importance of peace and the futilities of violence. The August 7th Memorial Trust is actually um, a group, was put together by a group of trustees. And um, they are the ones who came up with the idea of the park and the museum. As we continue exploring the park, let's hear what Nairobians had to say about the rising cases of insecurity here in Nairobi. Check this out. Ukitoka inje usiku basi hata mtoto anaesa shikwa pakwe. Watoto wanapakwa katika vijiji. Hata wazee wananyongwa. Unaesa toka mzaa meenda kuleta mboga. Akirudi tayari umamo taungojia ukose. Wakati askari wanakuja hapa wanarazi watu wetu hapa sana. Kusawa wakisema waisi zizi ndo naficha. Na wa waisi si wa hapa. Wanatoka mbali. Wanakuja kufuruka watu hapa. We are ever threatened kwa miswa mara tunaambiwa eh, watu wako chini ya stima watahamiswa wako wa, watu wako eh, kando ya moto watahamiswa watu wako eh, kando ya reli watahamiswa sasa sisi kwa sababu watu hawana ukweli watakaa hapa mtakani sasa wanaingilia kwa alifu ili wawese kutinufaisa kapula ayo maneno aita As we were 
exploring the memorial park, we met one of the survivors who tells us of this day as though it was yesterday. What yeah. kind of injuries did you suffer on August 7th? I sustained severe injuries on my back, chest, and the uh, head. As I stand here, I have 16 meters on my back. It has been a long journey, and my left lung was damaged. So it is like I survived with one because all the time, like this time when it is hot, I usually have a lot of attacks. And I also had a memory, I had lack of memory for one year. And I thank God because it has been a long journey. People call me miracle and I'm indeed I'm a miracle. We have been commemorating 15 years since the August 7th morning. When we come back, we are going to be joined by Lydia with the Town Talk. Until then, stay tuned. My name is Michael. My name is Fiki Sosolo. And we are in Nairobi County. Join us and others after this story for a town talk discussion. Dalmas is a um, normal guy, just like any other person there. But a person who's got passion for a lot of stuff, football being one of them. Besides football, I'm a dancer, professional dancer. I dance in the Pamoja dance group. I lost my leg uh, through a road accident uh, back in 1989. I was four years old. So yeah, from two, uh, 89 till now, I've just been living with my one leg. Football is one of the world's most watched games. But did you know that Kenya has an amputee's football team? Well, today Tazama joins the amputee's football team at Nyayo Stadium, where Sparks and Amani are going to have a tournament. I talked to Dalmas, the captain of Valentine's Amputee Club, to learn more about amputee football in Kenya. Dalmas has been practicing here at the Pangani grounds and together with others have since initiated the Amputees Football Association, a team which is hoping to represent Kenya in the 2018 World Cup. Football is my passion. You know, I've done, I do all of these other things, but when it comes to football, I'm so like determined. I'm ready to, to lead. I'm ready to do everything possible to make it uh, work out and, uh, I mean, things happen and maybe make the best uh, amputee team in Africa. I'm going to play with my own team. I think it's it's a unique thing. You know, it's something that is a very new it's a very new game in Kenya. Uh, barely four years old, or let's say three and a half years old, and it's something that personally gives me a lot of strength. The team, however, is facing key challenges, as Dalmas tells me. In the field, we you know we have crutches, and uh, when I'm playing, I could get injured, and I could maybe tore uh, 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 you know a knee, or I could get really badly injured that I could not walk, and I, because it's only one leg, so it, if it gets hurt, I, I, it's either I use a wheelchair or I just stay at home. Together with the chairman of the team, Ibrahim Wafula, we visited Mr. Jackson Gitonga, an assistant commissioner at the Ministry of Sports. Here, Wafula presented the team's sentiments. Tungataka, I am mambo na yawusu wale mavu na zaidi mchezo wa mpira wa kandanda wale mavu oweze kuingizo kwa mchezo na watu wengi wa famu kusu mchezo kwa maana ata wale mavu ni semoja ya wanainchi wa tika inchi yetu ya Kenya. Mimi kama mwakilishi ambaya mwenye uwa na kilisha serikali upandu wa FKF Nitaongea na FKF, mweze kupata kuwa na ule usiano wa pamoja. Mweze kusaidiana, mweze kuweza kukuza au mchezo pamoja na u mchezo mungine. Kwa sababu, tuwe sama tuwe arambi stars zile na cheza. Tungetatusikia kesho. 
kuna rambe stars yeah, ya watu ya mpiti yeah. ingekuwa ni vizuri maana inchi yetu itaweza kuendelea mbele ah yeah. uh, sahi nasikia hata ile kidonda niko nayo kwa roho itapona kwa sababu najua hapo ni serikali hata kama sijapita kwa Mr President niko na commissioner wa sports najua shida zangu za sports ya MPT zitaisha finally Wafula, the team's chairman, managed to meet with the deputy commissioner of sports today. It is our hope that their meeting will materialize in the near future. What are the team's future plans? Yep, we are three years old now. And uh, if you look at the team, I mean, if you see this team playing, you'll think this team has been there for 10 years. And it's only three years, so at the moment we are really, we have big plans coming. We have the World Cup next year, we have the African Cup of Nations coming uh, in October this year, hoping that Kenya is going to host it, because we are, we, we are bidding, bidding for it and we have the go-ahead from the AFA, which is the body for the uh, PT football in Africa. And uh, we are getting ready for it. We have a new government. What, what I, I hope from the new government is it's, it's a, a government of young people. And they promised that they're going to do everything possible to enable sportsmen to be successful. I'd really urge them from our, the, most, the most top high, please help this team, help the amputees. We want to spread this game all over the country. just watched, I'd like to know of the people here, how many knew that there existed Valentine's Amputee Football Club? Okay, so not so many of us in the room. <laughs> so I'd like to know, um, why is it that we as a society do not um, passionately support um, disabled sportsmen and women as we do for those in uh, mainstream sports? I'm talking now, I'm the Secretary General of Kenya Amputee Football Federation and we've got very many challenges concerning how to put the team together because there are many more teams in, in, in Kenya, not necessarily Valentine. There are teams in Kisumu, there are teams in Mombasa, there are teams in Thika, there are teams in Kitale. For us to make them to come overboard for maybe for some other tournament, it's, it's still a very big challenge because the public out there have not recognized us. What is the perception that we have on the disabled in our society? <laughs> Uh, my view is that uh, the society usually perceive persons with disabilities are people who are incapable and they don't see anything good coming out of persons with disabilities. More, uh, most often they think that persons with disabilities should be s people who expect sympathy from the public. That's why they get surprised to, to hear that, oh, an amputee, for example, can do football. I don't know what I'm saying. Now there is the National Development Fund for Persons with Disability. Uh, how many people here are aware of that fund? Yeah? You're aware of it? So how effective do you think the National Development Fund for People with Disability is? I, I'm not qualified enough to speak on what has been the uh, impact, but I know that there are people who have um, been the set up loans to, to, to set up businesses or there are some institutions that have been funded to make um, to make them accessible to persons with disability. And I know at um, a certain point, uh, not really the fund, but now the National Council of Persons with Disabilities supported some sportsmen to either go and uh, participate in some sports or do one or two, three, three things, which uh, perhaps if they wasn't there, they, they couldn't get that particular support. There is also a challenge uh, with some families whereby they don't um, expose their children. So you'll find out that uh, you have a child who is talented in the house, but because how can the basics uh, like education, ama 
you know, the life that a normal child is supposed to have. In Akko, it's a very big challenge for this kid because there are times we will blame the government, yes. But the government is not supposed to be coming to my house to look for that child. I'm also supposed to, to bring the child out because up to now, you are 20 sana have not uh, registered with the National Council and yet they have physical challenges. Who are we to blame? Some of the stipulations in the 2003 Persons with Disability Act states that um, equipment, training and medical personnel, transportation facilities for sports persons is supposed to be provided. So let's talk about that implementation. For me, I think the access of the sports facility, I think the stadiums have, in Kenya have tried to give us the facility because I have been in sports for almost five, seven years right now. I was the first time of sitting in volleyball Kenya. And uh, we have been training. They have given us the course free. But in terms of uh, transport, I think we cannot afford to have all of us our vehicle which we can access the facility by getting our um, good transport, maybe our old vehicle which we can access it very, uh, the way people think. But, and uh, people as uh, people with disability, we have been using the normal vehicle. We have to assess our training. No one has to pay for us, we have just to go there. There might be some challenges in implementing the Personal Disability Act 2003, but there are sections that are being implemented already. Like, for example, any person with disability who's earning an income now, they're actually exempted from paying tax, income tax, up to 100,050 a month. But you have to apply to that through KRA for you to get that particular benefit, which then means that you can use the money that you have, you have paid pay to, I mean, sort yourself out. Because, like, my caliper walking, this foot alone is around 10,000. That's not the same as equal to your shoe. I remember in 2004 when there was under 22 junior championship for winter basketball. The teams were from Iran, Tanzania, and Kenya, and South Africa. But the whole embassy of Iran was in Kasarani to cheer their people. Amazing, the Ministry of Sport didn't send any official to cheer the Kenyans, and the Kenyans were hosting these games. So I think this is lacking, and this is something that if the government supports then, we can implement the act. The act is good as it is written, but if there is no will to implement it, then it's as good as any book written by any other person. What do you think we can do as a community to be more accommodative and sensitive to the needs of those people with disability? The kids with disabilities, they have to give themselves out. And as you know, take him say, Kaam, Sakona, and a joke, Hana Mugu. At times they, they tend to hide. You know, they do not show out what they can do. At least if they show out what they can do, we can, um, we guys with, we, we, who don't have any disability, we can at least help them in some way. But since our kids feature, there's no way you can help. Give also persons with disability the, the, the opportunity to participate in every, every initiative that they do in the community. They can really uh, address issues that uh, are affecting them. The, the first thing that we need to know is that uh, we need to accept these people first of all and we know it's there. Some of them have been born with it, some of them have gotten it from accidents and we don't know about yourself also. You might be, you don't know about your future, you cannot tell the future, is it? Oh, that is it for today's Town Talk. Now using the contacts appearing on your screen, let us know what it is that you're doing to help the disabled in your community.
Be sure to like our Facebook page, Tazama6, and follow us on our Twitter handle, at Tazama6. Let's continue to preach peace.